Hi, I'm Paul the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be creating a sort of antique weather beaten type sign, but I'm going to be doing it on reverse glass. But before I crack on with the vid, if you're a fan of Victorian techniques, gold leaf, reverse glass, sign painting, and loads more, you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about, and I usually release a video every week. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description. I reward my patrons with a different vector design every month. There's also a link to my Etsy shop, my Instagram, and the Happy Gilder Facebook group, where we're all kind of sharing ideas and helping each other out. Okay, so that out of the way, let's crack on with the vid. Okay, so a little while ago, I got a question asked to me, and that was how to get that kind of distressed effect, like a sort of an ant actual antique sign. Now, I knew how to do that on an actual painted sign on a piece of wood, and that's using something called crackle paste, where you would paint your sign and then put the crackle paste on afterwards, and it would give this really nice kind of distressed sort of weathered look. That got me thinking whether that's possible to achieve that look on a reverse glass piece, so I started looking into it, and I found a product and tested it, and we can achieve that, so I'm going to show you that now. So I'll start off, I've prepped a small panel, um, all I've done here is sandblasted the back coating off a mirror using a stencil. If you haven't seen my previous videos of how to do that, I'll put a link up here and I'll put a link in the description as well. So, the product in question that I found is this. Um, I hope you can see, I'm going to put a link to this in the description. I bought it off Amazon and it seemed really reasonably priced based on everywhere else I looked. So you might be able to find it cheaper, but I was impatient. I wanted Prime, I wanted to give it a try. So the way it works is this is a two-part process, although I'm going to do this video as, as more than two parts because I don't only want to achieve this crackled effect. I want to either gild the back of this piece or paint the back of this piece. I haven't quite decided yet. So what you do, you've got two, two tubs here. One of these is a base coat and one of them is a top coat. And all that means is the base coat goes on first and then the top coat goes on after. Um, the tests that I've done suggest that you want to apply this very thinly. When I applied it quite thick, I did get sort of bigger cracks, but they looked unnatural, almost like grooves that, that were sort of sticking out. Because this is reverse glass, it didn't quite look right. So I laid it on quite thin and got a really nice, subtle kind of small crack. So what I'll do is I'll bring the camera down and then start just putting the base coat on. Right, so I've got two brushes, one for doing the kind of intricate bits around here, and then another one just to kind of paste it on. So, what you'll notice first when you open this, firstly, it's white, and it smells pretty much like PVA glue, so I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't much different in the actual sort of chemical makeup of it than PVA glue. This doesn't dry white, it dries clear, very much like PVA glue, so, you know, when you're pasting it on, don't be kind of alarmed that... Yeah, it looks a bit milky because once that is actually on there and starts drying, that just goes clear. But what I found is it is good to kind of put to try and put this on evenly. So at the moment, that's not very even, but that's just because I'm just slapping it on. But what I will do is once I've sort of covered this area and I'm happy with it, we'll just give it a kind of neaten up with this brush. So, you know, up here in that top corner where there's a bit too much doesn't have to be sort of stroke perfect, you know, but just kind of get it so that you kind of seems as though you've got an even coverage. And like I say, you won't see the strokes, it's just uh, to get a more even crack. So something like that, I'll potentially just remove this bit. So what I'm gonna do is do the rest of that on time-lapse so that you don't have to watch me paint it all. And then you leave it for a couple of hours so if you just have paint an area that's maybe not your glass so that you can tap it and see when it's done. If you leave this for an extra long time, it sort of goes sticky again, I've found. So after a couple of hours, check it. If it looks ready to apply the other coat, do it. Because I left the, uh, some of it overnight and the next day it had gone all sort of tacky again. So anyway, let's switch to the time lapse. Right, so this has been sat for about two hours, and as you can see, it's all gone quite clear. It's ever so slightly tacky, but that's absolutely fine. It will still work exactly the same. And like I said, I don't know if it does actually even properly set. I might have 
done my test piece when it was slightly tacky because I just checked the test piece that I set up like about a week ago and it was still tacky. I applied some of this and it worked. So that does tell you that what I said earlier isn't true at all. You've got plenty of time to kind of do this. But that being said, within the two hours that I was sat there waiting for this to dry, it's got two dog hairs in it. Right. So, I mean, I suppose if it's going to stay tacky, the longer you leave it, the more likely you are going to end up with dust in it and stuff like that. So I think if you can put something like um, a net over it, you know, those things what you kind of stop flies getting in your food or, or something like that, that's, that'd be a good idea. So what I've got now is the top coat. And it's a little bit thinner, a bit more liquidy than the last one. And I'm going to apply this similar you know like not too thick and try and keep it relatively even you know um this from an earlier test piece i did i i did one where i sort of really slapped this on and uh, the, the cracks were a bit bigger but i think it is you know anything like this is going to be a, a bit random a bit like glue chipping you know you do whatever you can to kind of make it even and and prepare it but in the end you know there is just some things that are left to nature and it will do what it will do so i'm just going to use this standard sign writing brush to, to go over all of the more detailed bits like before and then i'll switch to to my larger brush to finish it up so I'll go back to the time lapse and then leave that to dry and start cracking Right, so I've left that to dry. The observant amongst you will notice that in the few hours that that takes, I've managed to grow a beard and get fatter, but that's not what happened. I've just been camping for the weekend. So here's the result anyway. So I don't know if you can see that, but I think it's better viewed if I put a light down the side. I hope that works. So it's quite uneven, but that's fine. At least it's cracked. And you know, I think like I said before, it's a bit, in the hands of the gods when it comes to whether or not it's going to be even or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this. I know I said I hadn't decided whether I was going to paint it or gild it, but I just thought my previous video about how to make the 3D relief coin, which I'll put a link to up here, there's a technique what I've done in that, which was called inking, where I diluted a black enamel with white spirit, painted it across the back, and then after that had dried, I gilded it. And that's all I'd do on this if I wanted to gild it. I wouldn't just lay gold leaf because it would look like a, a sort of rubbish gild that I hadn't sort of buffered out properly. But with the black sort of seeping into the cracks, that would certainly look deliberate. So what I'm going to do is make a sort of weathered paint effect. So the colour I'm going to start with is this, which is Oxford ochre, and it's kind of sort of yellowy brown. I'm going to rub that onto the surface. Um, and then once I've sort of got it to where I want it, I'm then going to back that up with white. So, there we go, give this bit a shake. And what I've got in here is just a little bit of white spirit. So I'm going to start off with just a bit of old dish cloth. Start the lid there as well. I'm just going to get the paint on there and non-diluted, like just sort of as is like that. And then just start rubbing this. Well, this is messy, so. And just start rubbing this across the back. Now, as I'm doing this, this is going to seep into the cracks. It's obviously also staining the kind of the clear areas as well, but that's kind of where the white spirit comes in. So, I'm not sure if you can see here that that is really kind of going into those cracks nicely, which is exactly what I want. So, smearing this on. And you've got plenty of time because this is an enamel paint, so they take a little while to dry. Even if this goes proper tacky, you can still get your white spirit and rub a load of it off. It's not until it properly sets that you'd have to use something else to get it off. But let's have a look. I'll go a bit more, I reckon. Start plastering it on. 
just really making sure that that is in all those little cracks. All right, and I think I'm done with this one now, so I'm just going to go throw this in the bin. Right, I can show you what this looks like now, and it looks like an absolute mess because you can see all those smears, but you can see that that has gone into those cracks really nicely. So next step, get a clean cloth. I'm just going to dip this into the white spirit, wring it out a bit. I don't want it so it's dripping, but, and then just start rubbing that along the, around the back of here. You can see where that's diluted it is smearing it across and that's fine. You know, got plenty of this and we can kind of, and we've got plenty of time as well. So we can kind of really make sure we get the effect we want. I found the way of really seeing what you're doing with this is, well, it depends on the color really, but because this is a kind of lighter color, I'm going to put a dark bit of vinyl underneath it so I can see, you know, how it's looking. So I'll just do that now. Right. So that's a bit easier to see. Cracks look great. The glass or sort of clear areas look a bit rubbish. So again with the white spirit. Let's get these off. So I'll leave that with white spirit. Now I'm just going to go with a completely dry one and then start trying to buffer this paint off till I can get to a kind of Sort of almost clear it doesn't matter if it's a bit murky but you just don't want to see the smears because that'll just sort of ruin the look of it you know i want these sort of cracks to just appear as though the sort of white paint is going off not that i've sort of done a base coat of the the ochre beforehand so let's have a look. so i'm thinking that is looking great down here might need a little bit more of the paint in some of the other areas. So it's a bit, you know, a bit on and off for want of a better phrase, but get that right in there. Then with my dry cloth, I'm just gonna use that for now. It's looking good now, really starting to see it in these areas. And I think that's about it. I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to see what that looks like. So I'll wait for this to dry, then I'm going to come back and just back it up with white paint. Right, so that's been sat drying for a couple of hours and you can see that looks really nice. They're really visible. If I put this this way down, you can kind of see a bit clearer. Now I'm going to paint this white just because my goal at the outset was to kind of reproduce the aged and sort of antiqued effect. But that's not to say that this can't be used for numerous other things. You know, it's pretty aesthetically pleasing. So, you know, if you painted that black, that would look really nice as well with the kind of yellow running through it. Just kind of wouldn't look like the sort of authentic broken up paint look that we're going for. So I'm just going to get the white open. And this will be nice and quick because all I'm going to do is just slap white all over it and see what it looks like. Right, so in a weird twist of fate, I got a message last week saying, do I edit my videos and sort of leave out mistakes? And I don't, um, I tried to leave in all of the mistakes and then it just so happened I made a big one on this. But it's not anything to do with the technique. So here's the finished piece and then you can see where I messed it up. But I don't know if you agree, but I think the actual antiquing on this came out really well. I think it looks quite authentic. I certainly really like the way the ochre sort of brings out the cracks in the white. And yeah, it's an easy technique to do. Unfortunately, I'm just a bit heavy handed when it comes to framing, but I don't really make these things for any other reason than to kind of show you guys how to do stuff on YouTube. So at least I got to the end of it and can show the results of the actual technique that I was showing. So this is now going to go in the bin and I'm going to go and have a beer, but I hope you enjoyed the video. 
If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.